If you're a facilities manager at a university, you know students rely on the cafeteria for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the occasional late night snack. So when a dishwasher breaks down and dirty plates pile up, the mess hall can turn messy in the blink of an eye. Enter Granger. With over a million industrial grade products and fast delivery, the product you need now is never far away. So you can turn that dishwasher back into a lean, clean washing machine. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are. You are listening to Sunday Talks with Kelly and Lisa. I am the Kelly part. Lisa is here as well. Somewhere. Good morning. I'm Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I never know where, where, when you're going to pipe in. Um, <laughs> what we're talking about this week is self-love in regards to healing and how healing is not a straight line. Um, it's not one and done. How you feel about yourself determines how well and how deeply you heal your trauma. Um, really, self-esteem and self-love are the key to every single aspect of your life. You want to start us out, Lisa? Um. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was unexpected. Good, <laughs> Good morning, Kelly. <laughs> so I know we talk a lot outside of the show, um, you know, after we have our show, just let listeners know kind of our process, we'll have conversations and then throughout the week something will happen or we'll have like an epiphany and it's like, hey, we need to dive right here in this particular part because it's not linear, like you said. It's like time. It's not linear. It's it's cyclical. I feel like, you know, take a ball of string and just bundle it up and just keep bundling it, keep bundling it, keep bundling it, throw it on the floor and now pick up a piece of it, that's your healing journey. You know, <laughs> you're going to untangle that one piece, but guess what? There's another tangle. So um, I know we had talked offline about we're talking so much about self-love and confidence and whatnot, but I felt, and I know you did too, that we needed to go just a touch deeper because everybody's like, okay, I know I need to love myself more. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I start? And then – I know we've had the conversation of once you get to a certain point, something else is going to come up or something else is going to come up. It's never final. You're going to be in situations that are going to trigger you um, until you really get that healing down and that manifesting that perfect life. For example, I'm with family this weekend. Uh, We came out to – I'm originally in Texas. Well, not originally. That's where I – live right now, and we came to Maryland to visit my side of the family. We've been here since Wednesday before Thanksgiving. That's very important to note that I've been here since Wednesday. I'm leaving tomorrow uh, to go back to Texas, but, you know, (laughs) when you're with family for an extended period of time in the same household and you have different views and different takes and different perspectives, it can really lead to some very interesting conversations. And for me, this is something that I think is very important for our listeners to know. You might not feel like you've finished your healing, and you might in 15 years trip on something that triggers you. Here's where you know your healing is very, very, very concise, where you might still get triggered. However, how long do you hold on to that? How fast do you let it go? How quickly can you pull yourself back in with saw and say, hey, that's their perspective. It doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make me the whatever the case may be here. And I love myself enough that I can step back and say they are allowed their perspective and their opinion that is their perspective. They don't see it from my eyes, and I'm not, insert, you know, adjectives here, what they perceive, whether it be political or financial or, you know, here's a great example, and I'm going to bring some interesting perspective into this. Um, 
forgive me all now, but one of the conversations that my sister and I had was about children. And I have two. When I was in high school, when I married my first husband, everybody thought that I was boy crazy, and all I wanted was to get married and have kids. That's well, never what I wanted. I did not see that for myself, particularly at that time, maybe later, but not at that given time, not in high school, not in, you know, right after high school, like maybe at the age of 30 I would have considered settling down. I was too wild. I was too free. I loved to explore. I didn't want any sort of ball and chain type of uh, attachment to anything. I wanted to travel the world as an English as a second language instructor. And, you know, so I, there was these things that I wanted to do. However, there was a side of me that was very boy crazy. I loved boys and I loved being in relationships with boys. The problem with that was I was picking the wrong boys to be in relationships with because I was recreating a pattern from my parental, um, my paternal side of the family. And so I was recreating these. And in that vicious cycle, I was trying to get these boys to see, to see better, to change their ways, to not be how they were. And I was continually disappointed. It was disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. So right. the other day, my sister and I were in the living room with family. We were having a conversation about that. And she was completely shocked that that was never my intention was to get married and have children. My intention was just to run away. And it just happened to be that a marriage happened along those lines. And it was completely out of the, out of what I saw in my head. But what I saw in my head, what I wanted, and my actions did not align with each other. But right. now right. I can have that conversation and not be triggered. And now I'm in a relationship where I'm not with that pattern. I have broken my own cycle. And it's not just impacting me, it's impacting my children as well. That's an interesting point that you just brought up. The the need for people to grasp the concept that if you do not have enough self-love to truly heal your own traumas, you will pass those on to your children. Uh, you, you do. And, you know, I can look at some of the trauma in my life and through a great deal of study and self-discovery and dark nights of the soul, I have realized that many of the things that traumatized me were actually not even mine to begin with. They were passed down to me from my mom. When I was very young, I was absolutely fearless. I, I was just, she had a really tough time keeping up with me. And I just was a daredevil when I was very young. And then something happened. She started telling me stories about how, you know, she knew this story about somebody that was hurt on a roller coaster, somebody that was killed falling down a hill, or, and all of these horrible stories that were her traumas from her childhood and that were her fear. Somehow I absorbed them. All I wanted to do at that point was for my mother to love me. And my self-esteem suffered greatly because my mother was a teenager when I was born, and I have an older cousin who looks exactly like my mother. She didn't really want me. She wanted her own version of my cousin, and that was not me. So I spent a good part of my childhood dealing with things that weren't even mine to deal with. And it wasn't until I was a teenager myself that I started realizing, you know, I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm not afraid of speed. I'm not afraid of I'm not afraid. Why do why have I spent so much time being afraid? But my daughter spent a lot of time also with my mother. Because I too was a teenage mother. That apple did not fall far from the tree in that respect. And in talking with my daughter, she took on some of those same fears, too, that were not hers. So when we talk about our own healing and our own self-esteem and self-love, please do the work on yourself so you do not pass down the same traumas to your children. You know, your children deserve better. All of our children deserve better. 
mine certainly deserve better than the parent I started out being. But like you, I was that was never my dream. My dream when I was a kid was to travel around the world saving as many animals as I could save. And that's all I wanted. I never thought about growing up, falling in love, getting married, having children. I never, that was never my dream. And when I finally admitted that to my own children, <laughs> they were not shocked. Because I have also always, always done animal rescue. And to them, hearing that that was my dream as a child, they were like, do it now. We're behind you. <laughs> Go for it. And that is when I knew that I had healed a lot of that fear. When you can have open and honest conversations with someone, oh, God. anyone, about things that used to trigger you and they no longer trigger you, break yourself. The universe is about to take you deeper into your healing journey. And I think that's what makes people give up because you just get to a point where you're feeling healed and you feel like, oh, I get it. I understand why that stuff had to happen. And then next thing you know, your life breaks apart again or something triggers you and you spend two days in bed. Or whatever happens brings you right back down again. And at that point, people say, well, I healed. What's wrong with me now? And that's not the right attitude. If you're in that point right now, and I know this time of year, so many of us have issues. We're in that horrible shopping period between Thanksgiving and Christmas right now when the world seems to go nuts. And it's a hard time, even if everything is perfect again. But if you're on a healing journey, like everyone who is awake is, it's very a very triggering time. You know, whether you are spending time with family you would rather not be spending time with, or you find that in deciding not to spend time with them, you end up alone, it's okay. Whatever it is, know it's going to pass. And if you are re-triggering things that you thought you would heal, congratulate yourself because you have healed enough to where you can go deeper. And I know, Lisa, you and I have talked about that, how it it goes deeper and deeper. Um, And sometimes it's the weirdest things that trigger us. You know, I, I found myself in a Dollar General yesterday. And I was fine. I was looking for little things. I'm doing gift bags for for friends. (coughs) Excuse me. I was looking for little things to make them cute. And I heard a kid pushing a one of those musical Christmas decorations and Carol of the Bells started playing. And I started crying. I had a very dear friend and business partner, lousy business partner, amazing friend, who passed away. <laughs> and every Christmas, he played Santa. He was a Jewish man who played Santa Claus and handed out gifts in orphanages every year. Oh my and God, I love that. we would go shopping for small toys because he was not a wealthy Jewish businessman. He was a lousy Jewish businessman. I know, unheard of. That is unheard of, but I swear it exists. And there was one store that we would always go in, and that song would seemingly play every time, and he would fall on his knees, put his hands over his head to make a scene, bells, 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 make them stop, bells, by your belt. And it was so funny because it was a total act, and he was in there as a Jewish person, buying Christmas presents. (laughs) And when I heard that yesterday, it made me cry because I realized anyone we ever love remains a part of our lives forever on some level. And then I realized why it triggered me. And then I started laughing because I I could visualize him falling to his knees, screaming, bow, bow. And he was such a comedic actor 
it, is, it was a sight to behold. This is, but what that told me was we're still going deeper. And as long as you live and as much as you heal, you will never be completely free of triggers. And that's not a reason to give up. That's a reason to enjoy life. That's a reason to go forward and say, you know what, I treasure this memory. And, yeah, it still touches my heart. But how lucky was I to have ever had this person in my life, even though I still many years later feel their love. It's, it's all about the trigger. And the thing is, once you realize you're being triggered, it kind of takes the sting away. Don't you find that, especially with family? You know, it, it's the people closest to us are the ones that can trigger us the deepest. But when you realize, hey, you know what, this is a trigger, I have a choice. I can replay old programs, or I can come up with something new and different. And I think that's kind of what you've gone through with your family. I know every time I visit my family, I go through the same thing. I want to expand on something that you just said about I'm coming into this situation with fresh eyes, you know, with healed with with the healed part of myself. So my triggers, they're still there, but my reaction to them and talking that sense into myself about they're not on the same journey, first of all. They are allowed their perspective, and they have their own version of truth. And that's something I think that's really important. There's your version of truth. There's my version of truth. And then there's that area where it's not gray. It is just, in fact, facts and you know but they're allowed to see from their perspective because they have their own emotions and their own you know intellects and and all of these different perspectives not perspectives but different contributions to where you know how their perspective is impacted and I have mine my sister might not see my parents the same way I see my parents and even though I know my parents did everything in in the world for me you know, the the way that I look at the parental figures compared to the way that she looks at parental figures, she's a completely different person. So, of course, that's going to happen. Being able to come back to, hey, that's her story. She's walking her own story. That's her perspective. And she, I can't change her perspective. That's what it is. When she's ready to do her healing, and maybe she is doing her healing. Maybe she's in a, in a stage of healing that, you know, I'm not privy to. That's important. There, that That's something you also need to remember. And when you remind yourself of that in that moment, you can pull yourself back and say, I am where I am, I am healing, and this doesn't have the effects of this trigger does not have to last as long as it did in the past. Because you can choose to say, wow, I learned my lesson. Look at where I am right now. This is fabulous. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for showing me this. And go back to being your wonderful, amazing self. Being happy or right. whatever state you want you want to be in. So for me, the the story aspect, when you heal, so I hear all of the time, let me let me backtrack a little bit. I hear all the time, change your story, rewrite your story, change your story, rewrite your story. The stuff that happened to you isn't going to be rewritten. It happened. Right. And there's no yep. way to take an eraser, and you can block it, <laughs> but you're eventually <laughs> going to break down the wall that's built around it to block it. You're not going to be able to rewrite it. However, you can rewrite your perspective of it. You can rewrite how it now impacts you. And you can go back and heal that particular story or that particular moment by changing your perspective, your approach, and your attitude about it. And I think that's right. something that a lot of, of coaches, I don't dive into everyone's programs out there. There's way too much. The you know, I see all the time, like, rewrite your story, but I don't, you can't rewrite that situation, but you can rewrite the narrative, the way that you think about it, the way that you process it, your perspective of it, 
what you can learn from it. What do you think about that? Well, absolutely. You know, the past is I have a a habit of if someone that is in my life does something out of spite or is deliberately trying to hurt me, I just cut them off. I will never speak to them again. And I'm okay with that. It's, It's not that we are rewriting a story. We're rewriting a future is what we're doing. And the deeper you heal, and it is very, very tangled, you know, bit of a twine or rope like you just like you described at the beginning of the show. Um, it's it, it's maybe a time to take fresh eyes, take a different perspective on your, you know, in my what I was discussing earlier. Um, it wasn't that I blame my mother for what she passed down to. It's that in realizing that not everything you're holding on to is your own, it made me look with compassion at people who had hurt me. Because it isn't that everyone, no one, and I've said this before, no one says, you know what, I want to have a couple of kids so I can ruin their lives. Nobody does that. It's overwhelming to be a parent at any age. And when you're coming from abject poverty, which my mother was, and you find yourself in that situation, the conditions around my birth are that I really should have never happened. And that is, that the enormity of that is not lost on me. Neither of my parents were supposed to be able to conceive a child at that time. And yet here I am. Um, you have to look at your past as, did I learn that lesson? Is that a lesson I need to carry forward? If I've learned that lesson and I can let that go now, I'm going to put down that baggage. And I think that's what many people mean when they say rewrite your past. It is isn't that you want to change the past. It's that we want to change how we look at it. And if you were mm-hmm. someone who, like I was and like my daughter did, um, stole candy at the checkout in the, from the car, I did it. I know I did it. I was told I did it. Um, you know, they have all that candy at the checkout line. And if you're a small yeah. child sitting in the cart, it's very easy to reach over and grab something. And I did it. Right. And my kid did it. And what I found was that a part of me, because of the severity of how I was treated after that, a part of me decided, oh, I'm no good. I don't deserve anything. And I had to heal very, very, to even realize that that was affecting my self-esteem. And that, there it was. And it wasn't that their intent was to punish me to the point where I thought I was worthless. Their intent was to make me not do it again. So right. it worked, but it also damaged my self-esteem. So when we're talking about rewriting our past, it's looking at our past with fresh eyes. You know, nobody needs to feel like they are dirt forever because when they were two, they reached over and grabbed a kid. That the right. That the not fit that crime. And yet so many of us as adults are holding on silly little trivial things like that. And you have to look at it. That was not their intent. That was not their intent at all. And when you realize that, that piece of, okay, it lightens your load. I'll say it that way. Because I believe that every time we are traumatized, we lose not only a little bit of our self-esteem and our self-love, we lose a tiny little sliver of our soul who runs. Because when you're scared and you don't know what to do, in my case, I always ran. And a piece of healing as we grow and as we go through our lives is to go and find all those tiny little pieces of ourselves that we've lost along the way. I, it's 
sounds to many people to be ludicrous. How can you lose a piece of your soul? If you are traumatized that much, you can. And trauma for every one of us is different. Where things from my childhood affected me deeply, it was because I was more sensitive than everyone else around me. Now, if you're one of those kids that grew up and nothing bothered you, and trauma just rolled off your back like, you know, water off a duck, then you were less traumatized. And you would have been less traumatized by the same thing. This is not a competition. Each and every one of us is on our own healing journey. But when you're doing deep inner work, you can do it on your own. You can read books. There are many wonderful ones out there. You can go on YouTube. You can find meditation videos that appeal to you. Um, You can go the professional route. And I highly recommend everyone to go into counseling with a professional at least once in their life. It's amazingly healing. We have to learn to forgive our wounds. It doesn't mean you have to forgive some horrible things that happen to you, but you have to look at yourself with compassion. And so often through our lives, innocent little things that people don't give a second thought about traumatize us deeply. And we need to forgive ourselves for not realizing the triggers earlier. You know, so often we go, oh, that person hurt me. That's why I messed up totally in my life. That's not what we're telling you to do. And that's not the right attitude. You need to realize that the people who hurt you were hurting themselves. It's true. Yeah. And it's very true. And, you know, there's in family groups, there are so much pain between siblings. Um, you know, I've joked for many, many years that the term dysfunctional family came from my family. Um, <laughs> I think every one of us could say that. <laughs> I think yeah. <laughs> more families are dysfunctional than they are functional. And this time of year really brings up all of that dysfunction to the front and center. Don't beat yourself up for feeling wounded during family gatherings. It's easy for us to say, don't let it bother you if you haven't healed it. But look at the people that, you know, consider your store. If you have a spiteful, vindictive person in your family, realize that person is really hurting deep inside themselves. You know, everyone is hurt. And I think if we go into family gatherings or, or any social situation with that thought in the back of our minds, Everyone is hurting. Maybe it'll help you be less triggered. Maybe. Depends on how deeply you heal. What do you what are your thoughts about how what we've been talking about plays into self esteem and self love? You mentioned I like I think everybody has stolen something at least once. Situations, and I don't want to call them little. This is a big situation. The way that you, the way that they handled the situation with you, was not necessarily the way that my situation might have been handled, and it impacted right. you um, as far as uh, you know, self value. You are breaking uh, up. Can you, have you moved? Oh, am I really? No, I, is that well, better? Well, okay, that's better. Perfect. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm actually in the basement having this conversation, so it's too cold outside <laughs> for me to go outside right now. So I do apologize. But the um, the way that you know I, that your situation was handled, um, and how it made you feel, um, as far as the the value that you saw in yourself, even at such a young age, that is something that it definitely is a scaffold, and it builds on top of a pyramid. Even like there's your foundation, and it, it you know builds on top of that for me with what that took me to a place of when you go back and look at that one particular moment and you can say that they were doing the best that they could they 
reacted to it the way that they thought that would be the most beneficial for you so that you didn't turn out to be a, a grand theft? Um, you know, were they yeah. wanted to make sure that you were on the path of the straight and narrow and, you know, contributing citizen, whatever. Like you can do, that's the narrative that you can change. You can, it, the story still happened and the way that they approached it still happened. The way that you project the story back to yourself, the way that you word it even, um, you know, that narrative. Think about, think about love and then think about two different rom-coms about love and then think about two movies that are more of the um, the drama-based where, like, love happens to where the people that, that this particular star loves dies. It's the same basic concept. It's love. Two are romantic comedies. They make you laugh. They're fun. They're light. They're they're funny. And then two are these situations where there was love, but it turns out to be, you know, this horrific situation. It's still the same concept. It's just the narrative is different, right? So you can do that for your own stories. You can absolutely change that perspective and and that's the rewriting of of the story this the 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 foundation is still there but it's how you now view it or how you word the playback over and over again and when you continue to do it's like memorizing multiplication tables now you can rattle off seven times six without going through one times six two times six three times six whatever to get you to that point. It's that you're doing the same exact thing. You're memorizing a different perspective that's not as heavy on your right. soul and on your thoughts. Right. Absolutely. That's why I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, it's so important that we do go back and here is the thing that happens. And I think we need to explain this just because of someone's question that I just got. When we're talking about going deeper and healing, here's what happens. When you heal, let's let's take your life in in ten year increments. You know, um, just for example, it doesn't necessarily happen that way. You jump all over the place. But for simplicity's sake, I'm sixty. I just turned sixty, and I know it's hard. Um, when I started meditating and doing my inner work and asking questions, and I always tell people, ask until there are no more questions you can ask. You know, one of my first questions was, why do I set myself up in relationships that turn out horrible for me? Great for the other person, horribly for me. And it seems like in my life, I have chosen to be in relationships, whether it was a business situation, romantic, um, friendship. I have chosen people who have in my life that seem to feed off of me and become better people and end up hurting me deeply. Why do I do that? And then I had to look at, feel that way, because this happened in my childhood. Oh, okay. Well, let me look at that then. It leads you down a path, and you may find that you're looking at the last 10 years. Or what is more common to ask is you start asking your question, why do I feel this way? What is making me feel this way? How can I feel different? And your mind bounces back to when you were two. Mm -hmm. So healing is all over the place. It is not linear. It doesn't go in order. You remember things. I hope you are all by now meditating, or at least trying to, because that is the easiest way to heal. But even if you are not, please ask yourself questions. And listen for the answer. And sometimes it's hard to get in touch with your inner self because you've buried it so deeply. Please keep trying. If you ask a question and you don't get an answer, it's okay. You've started 
attempting to do that dialogue. What happens a lot of times is people give up. Usually it will not be in, in words. They will usually talk, show you pictures of things in a cup. If it doesn't happen, keep trying. Your intention will help you. Don't give up. Too many people give up right before they're going to make that break. Believe me, I've been there. I've been one of those people. It was really hard for me when I started healing, finally. It was really hard for me because I had buried my inner voice, my intuition under so many layers of garbage trauma that at first I didn't hear an answer. I didn't see a picture. But I kept lying. And when you least expect, and what happened for me is I used to be a runner. And I was running one day. And I wasn't really thinking about anything. And I had forgotten my headphones, so everything was quiet. And all of a sudden, I saw a picture. They came flooding through. And I realized it was because my mind was pretty boy. I was just concentrating on my next step. Sometimes that's what it takes. If you think you're unable to meditate, that's really go for a run, go for a walk, go for a talk. Sometimes that movement is what is needed to unblock what you've been afraid to look at. And that's what it comes down to, that you're afraid to look at. But everything goes in like a giant fire. You will be fine one day, and then all of a sudden something will trigger you. Yay! That's wonderful, because you know what that means? It means you're healing. It means you're feeling. And what happens a lot of the time is we've got so much crap pulled into ourselves that it takes a while to unblock. You know, it's like we create a giant spiritual fog inside ourselves. And it takes little by little. If you are not a person who cries, it's going to take you longer. Because unfortunately or fortunately, unclogging those memories, that past that you've been holding back, is going to require some tears. No, that's okay. It'll pass. Whatever you're going through, promise you it's pass. But you need to start looking at it. And only in really acknowledging what happened, can you let it go? What I like to do is when I would uncover something really deep and very dramatic, and believe me, I've got it, <laughs> without going into detail, I would scoop up with both of my hands that memory. Sometimes I had to pull it out of myself, and I would just blow it away. And if you get in the process of when something triggers you, and you're shocked at what you're remembering, blow it away. We have a caller, and I know you've been on hold for a long time, but I'm going to see here if you are. Hello? You're Good on morning. the air. Do you want to be on the air? Are you listening? <laughs> Absolutely. I love to be on the air. My name is Pastor Don Jr., CEO. Shouts out to the win team, all the people that called in. I know how it is to be stuck on hold. What I mean by hold is you're trying to move your life forward, but you can't get over this one hump on a hurdle, and it just causes a redundant effect. You keep doing the same thing, and you're trying to get out of it. You have to do something different. And people don't understand that God is bigger than anything. So sometimes he's going to put you in that redundant hole just to, to make sure that you got the knowledge, the wisdom, so you can live through that situation and tell somebody else about it. But uh, everything you said was 100% on point because some people are stuck in a situation they will never get out of it because they don't want to live forward. But that's one thing about time. It only goes forward. It never goes backwards. You can't take back the hands of time. I'm 45 now. If I could take back the hands of time when I was 18, I would do things a lot differently. But now that I am of age, I can see what I see. I know the zebra stripes are black and white. 
So I, I'm yep. saying to you, I'm loving the topic of discussion. I'm here. I, I, I text out a thousand people to come into this radio show. So I'm moving out the way. I know y'all got y'all show. Time is very precious and important, but I love what y'all are doing, and I love the topic. Thank you so much. First well, of all, so thank you so here. much for everything you just said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. You are on point, and you mentioned people get stuck. They don't, they're in that holding pattern. I wanted to actually bring up a next talking point of when you're in a situation that might trigger you, it's not necessarily the universe or God being ugly. It might be the universe or God saying, hey, look at how far you've come. Look at the wisdom that you have now. This is just a gentle reminder that you're awesome and amazing and you've come over, overcome some incredible situations. Now allow yourself to move forward. So thank you so much for your feedback and, and your comments. I really do appreciate that. I was pu- fist pumping the whole time you were talking. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and, you know, that um, very, very true. All of and whether you believe in, you know, a great spirit or a source or a God, wh- whatever verbiage you use that makes sense to you, lean on that. You know, sometimes we are tested, and it's kind of, you have a choice. Do you go this direction or do you go that direction? And sometimes we choose incorrectly. (laughs) I know when I started out on my spiritual journey, I was literally one step away from becoming what I know. Sometimes we (laughs) do that. And, you know, that's not wrong. It was what I know now, learning opportunities. You know, you mentioned if you could go back till you were 18, you'd have done things differently. Well, yeah. I, you know, and there were many, many times that I veered left when I should have gone right or straight. And, you know, I had a lot of fun. I have no regret because every single thing I went through was a lesson. And honestly, now I am right back where I should have been in the beginning had I not taken the scenic route. But boy, do I have a whole lot more stories than I would have had otwise. You know, and I, I think you can always go stories. back to do what you wanted to do then. Yeah. That's Sorry. true. Go ahead. <laughs> That's true. It, it is never too late. I, I'm living proof. It is never too late to do what you should have done in the first place. But I think stories, lessons that each of us learn along the way, are invaluable. And we need to share those because you never know who is listening and who is watching and who needs a particular story at a particular time. So, you know, there are two schools of thought, you know, don't tell anybody anything about you and just move forward. Or share your story so that someone else can learn. And, you know, there's all these things I've seen on social media about how, um, you know, private people are and how you should be a private. And if that is your personality, by all means, we don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. But some of us, were private for the wrong reason. Some of us were just, I don't want to tell anyone this because I'm ashamed of it. And if that's the kind of story you have, that's exactly the kind of story you can share. Because when you share your shame, you don't feel ashamed of it anymore. It's out there. And no one can use it against you. And someone else is absolutely going to benefit from you sharing your story. I think we have another caller here. Oh, wow. Yay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Do you have a comment or a question? Yeah, I just wanted to add in. Pastor Don um, put me on to the show, and I've been listening in, and this is something that um, I deal with in my ministry daily. My name is Shauna Pat, and um, I made a lot of mistakes. I went through a lot of things in my life, and the Lord showed me that uh, um, my pain was my platform. So I started, you know, at at one point I used to be like, oh, 
I'm in mean, ministry, certain things you didn't want to tell people about your past because, you know, um, they may look at you in a judgmental way, you know, and some people may not support you or some people may, you know, just pass all types of judgment on you. So I used to look at it like that. But then the Lord came in and he said, you know, no, the things that you went through were the things that I used to build you and to grow with you. And if I'm going to give you a platform, there's a lot of people out there who need to know what you are going through because you can help save someone else from going through a situation so they don't go down the route that you went down. Or you also can help someone who is in the same situation understand that they can come out of the situation. So I just feel like all the things that we go through, both good and bad, we should be able to share those things with people in order to help people, in order to um, give them some type of comfort in knowing that it's okay. Every situation that I've been through in my life has helped me. I used to think I was losing time. You know, I always just say, man, I, I lost years of time. I'm 32 years old. I'm going back to college right now for music business. I graduated in July from Full Sail University. I'm much more prepared now at 32 yeah. than I was coming out of high school. <laughs> you know, I'm much more prepared at this point than I was in the past. So I think the things that we go through, too, it helps us to get into God's time. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And when you you tell your story, people don't feel alone. Yep. Right. Right. You know, it's a lot of people that, um, you know, we talk to daily. I did like 17,000 albums hand-to-hand with people in the community selling my gospel albums with just me, my husband, and my kids. And um, I talk to a lot of people on a day-to-day basis. Just the other day, um, a police officer walked up to me and he started reading his rights, and I said, what are you reading rights for? You know, I've been incarcerated. So I'm looking at this guy, and he's saying, oh, um, I'm coming to investigate a crime. I say, okay, officer, what's the crime? I'm selling my gospel albums now. If I had not been what I had been through in the past, I wouldn't have known how to handle the situation that was in front of me. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have known my human exactly. rights. I wouldn't have known anything. So I'm telling right. him, okay, I'm not trespassing because I've never been banned from this particular location. If you would like me to leave, that would be fine. If you would like to um, ban me from this location, and then if I'm ever caught here again, then you can hit me with trespassing. You know, he said, oh, just take your, just take your license and go on. But if I had never been through what I had been through in the past, I wouldn't have known how to overcome this, you know. Right. right. We look at Absolutely. it while we're Thank you. It. And I just want to thank it's... y'all for having me on. And um, well, thank everyone, you for being can on. Check, everyone can check well, me out. Uh at www.shawnapatministries, that's S-H-A-W-N-A-P-A-T, ministries.com, where you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing with my gospel music career and um, how I'm taking the things of my past and placing it in music to help people with the Word of God. Well, thank thank you you so so much much for that. And How much time do we have, Kelly? We have about 10 minutes, and that's okay, a good. perfect amount of time. <laughs> you know, yes. I thank you, both of you, for calling in. It, it, it really, really is amazing that um, you guys took the time and that you listened to the show. So thank you so much for that. Very much. I want to just touch on, on Shauna's points a little bit. You know, she's – she talked about how she's being led to share her story and face her own fears of judgment from others. People who judge aren't ready to move themselves through certain situations, but there is somebody out there who will align with you, who will connect with you. And part of the healing process is sharing your experiences with others to help nurture and to help nurture them and help them grow out of where they are right now so that they can get unstuck, so that they can get out of that holding pattern and move forward. And you might not be ready to do that. You might not be ready to share your story. I just wanted to throw in here that if if there is something that you're going to address on your own to try to heal, there are groups, there are, um, you know, there are professionals, there are different types of groups and organizations, there's pastors, there's there are people that can help you through that. They don't always necessarily have to be a paid service for you to do that. I mean, I would strongly encourage you to find 
your group, your collective that can help you through those things. Um, no one has to go through anything alone. You can reach out to Kelly and me as well. Um, but don't feel like you have to go through it alone. And then start small. You don't have to do all of the 100 different things that you find to help you heal your journey. You don't have to do all of them, every one of them starting today. Something as simple as, you mentioned meditation. My meditation happens in the shower. I come up with some of my best ideas. There's just something purifying about the water or I'm washing away the day or a particular situation that comes up that I think about when I'm in the shower. Um, the, the, The rhythm of the water there's just something so purifying about that, and I do some of my best role-playing conversations to myself in in that particular location or the bath um, as well. And that's something that's that's my meditation. That's my um, time to do my reflection and because it's uninterrupted, right? It's just me, and I don't have to worry about my phone ringing or my kids being hungry or the dog needs to be taken out for a walk or the trash has to be put away or, you know, whatever. It's just me and that time for myself. And you can start off with something as simple as taking time in the shower to think through things and to meditate on those those things that you need to heal from. And then you can take it the next step further, maybe in a month or two when you, you know, really get good at that meditation in the shower, if you will, Take it and actually do your prayer meditation, you know, in a sacred space. Set up a sacred space that is you and your creator's time that you that you set with them and to dive in and do that meditation and focus on that thing that it is that you need to focus on. But I always do encourage, don't do it. You don't have to do it alone. And, and sharing our, our journeys, I know, Kelly and I have experiences completely different from each other. Our two callers had experiences that were completely different from from us. Um, But there are people out there who have been on that same journey that you've been on. And sharing your story can really help somebody else that's on that journey as well because we're not all going to align with everybody else. As much as we want to and as much as we try to, there are going to be certain people that you're just not going to align with the way that you would with others. Absolutely. And that is truly why it is so important for each of us to share our stories. Anything that you have gone through, I guarantee you somebody else has gone through it too. And they may feel very alone. One of the things that I want everyone to know is that you are never completely alone. No one around you physically that you can talk to, go on social media. I have taken time to talk to so many strangers on social media who have been going through a hard time. Especially this time of year, it is important to reach out. It is important to let people know you're there for them in whatever capacity you can be for them. One of the best things that we can do for each other is to send each other love. Whether you do that through a meditation, or through energy work like I do, or through a prayer. And there is a large pool thought that I tend to agree with that says that prayer is also meditation. So if Mm -hmm. it feels right for you to pray instead of sit and quote-unquote meditate, that is your meditation. We need to do a better job of taking care of each other. In this time of year, I used to volunteer for a suicide hotline. And this time of year, more people either feel like committing suicide, try to commit suicide, or actually go through with it than any other time of year. So it is especially important this time of year to reach out to let people know that you're there for them. Send them love. Send them light. Um, you know, do the best you can. And that's really all anyone can do. So we are almost out of time here. And I want to give Lisa a chance to um, leave you with any parting words. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please share the show. Um, thank you, callers. There was one that we didn't quite get to. Uh, please try again next Sunday. 
Uh, thank you guys so much. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you all so much for listening. I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a teaser. I am in the process of writing an article for a woman in business magazine. I will announce all of the details the next show if I have them. If not, stay tuned. Um, it is the basics of money mindset mastery. Um, it's a very simple approach to becoming a money mindset master or, as I like to call myself, a financial wellness warrior. So do stay tuned for that. Reach out to somebody. You are not alone. I know Kelly and I are going to have an off conversation about a survival guide for the holidays and maybe doing a couple of shows building up to the biggest part of the year, which is in December, um, as far as celebrations go for holidays. So do stay tuned for that as well. Thank you all so much for being here, callers. Thank you so much. We love having live callers on the show. So thank you so much for you know, calling in and giving your perspective and sharing a little bit of, of yourselves with our listeners. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Be blessed, and we will see you next week. Thanks, guys, for listening. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.